Hi, good evening. My name is Linda Johnson, and this is In the Public Interest. And we're starting off the new year, and this is September, the new uh, program year for us. September is Minority Health Month. And my guest this evening is Dr. Charles B. Simone. Welcome, Dr. Simone. Thank you, Linda. And uh, trust me, we've been trying to get him on all summer, but vacation time. So we thought we'd start off with uh, Dr. Simone because there's a lot of hot issues out here right now. Mm. And I wanted to touch on three. And we may as well just hit the road running and start off with the health care reform issue. A big issue. Now, you know the president mm. is going to be speaking to full Congress on the 9th. And, of course, we'll hear it. So. Give us some uh, ideas, some thoughts on health care reform. I think we all recognize there is a need. Yeah, right. We, we, are, we spend the most money in the world on health care, and yet we are only 19th out of 19 advanced countries with good health care. So we spend the most, we get the least return, um, and we're doing something wrong. The major thing that we're doing wrong is prevention. We're not doing anything about prevention. So that, that should be the cornerstone of any health care reform bill, and that's simply left out completely mm -hmm. from the health care reform bill. So that has to be rethought. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're trying to barrel over something, and I'm not sure why. You and I both know we've dealt with Medicaid, we've mm -hmm. dealt with Medicare, and you're always running into trouble with those systems, those government-run government systems. Government-run. Yeah. Uh, and I can't imagine that if you get more government involved, no matter who the administrators are, no matter who's in the White House, if you get more government involved, I think there's going to be bigger problems. So we can't have only government-run operations. Well, is there some alternative? <clears throat> well, let's face it, Medicaid and Medicare probably are not going anywhere. That's right. But if you're saying we should not add an additional uh, government run entity. I'm not saying that. I'm, what I'm saying is that when the government gets in mm -hmm. full boat, there's mm -hmm. always going to be problems with a government run system, whether it be Social Security, okay. Medicare, Medicaid. If the government's in totally as the only provider, you're going to have as problems. As the only provider. Now in this country, we, we give great care, I think, to indigent people. Mm -hmm. If they don't have health care uh, insurance, mm -hmm. they can come into an emergency room in our country, mm -hmm. get the care they need, and go away. The people who get squeezed in our country mm -hmm. are the middle class people. Uh, they either have a job that don't that doesn't provide enough health care, mm -hmm. or they elect not to have health care, and they're the people who are getting squeezed. So the very poor, the very rich, are always going to be well taken care of. Mm -hmm. It's the people. It's in the, the ones in between, like right. you and me. That's right. Like you and me. That's right. And you know, uh, one of the other <clears throat> issues that came up, and you know, we heard. I've heard all the stuff about the town halls and yes. different things and, and uh, people saying, keep your hands off my health health right. benefits and all. But I, you do agree that we need some sort of reform because, need, I mean... We need people who are going to take responsibility for their own health care. We need that person at the town hall meeting to say, okay, don't touch my health care, but now make me more responsible. I need to be more responsible. So if I have a high cholesterol, mm -hmm. I need to get that cholesterol down. Mm -hmm. If I drink, I have to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. if, I smoke, if I smoke, I have to stop smoking. So we have to take responsibility for our own health care, and the numbers the, the numbers will dramatically drop as far as cost to health care. And we'll become healthier. It'll be patriotic as well. So do you see a, a adverse effect on the insurers that are out there now, for example, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, well, I don't want to leave anybody out. You yeah, know. you know, if there's if a government runs the uh, health care system, then all those companies go out of business. I mean, that's what will happen. But that, I, don't that's, think, I don't see that as happening. Okay. I really don't see that happening. I was going to say, I, you don't really see that happening with Medicare and Medicaid. I mean, you still no. got the big right. bucks, right. you know. I think you're always going to have a private You're going to have a no private what. entity. Yeah. And, you know, it's just going to keep talking about the whole situation. The current, the current bill, as it's stated, has major problems. We don't want a, a panel to say, 
a little more health care for you because you've extended your life to as long as it can mm -hmm. be. Uh, you're near death. We don't want that to happen. We don't want a, another organization, a committee to say, well, you can't have those drugs because they're too expensive mm -hmm. and they're not going to benefit you. But we do need to look at things like prevention. Mm -hmm. We do need to look at things like are these drugs very effective or are they just put on the market at very high price tags with no benefit at all? So who should be the entity who looks at those sorts of things? I think we need to have a specific arm in the FDA, for instance, mm. that looks at this, 13 people, 9 people, who can never go into the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. after their stint in this FDA organization. Mm -hmm. And they have to look at these drugs and say, look, that drug really can't work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. It doesn't provide any more life to the person mm -hmm. than what the person can they have already to have. be objective. That's right. And right now we need more objectivity in these kind of organizations, in these agencies who are not elected by the people of the United States, but who wield unbelievable power over our lives. Wow. So this is a lot to hear, and I, I know that the town halls, you, you see some states where they've gone well and some states where they've been like well it's like anything else people have uh, yeah. anger and emotions well, and, and i always else. tell people the hardest thing in this country and i can only speak for the united states is people hate change oh yeah and they absolutely you know if you say okay then what would you do right. they don't have an answer right. but they just don't want change mm -hmm. You know, I can't take too much change. That's why we really need to concentrate on prevention. Mm -hmm. And apropos to the prevention story, we started the first children's prevention program in the country in 1981 called Kid Start. Oh, small. yes. The Kid Start program is designed to go into a, a church, an organization, a school, and teach little people, young people, five-year-old children, four-year-old children, ten-year-old children, how to have a proper lifestyle so that they will always have a good lifestyle and a longer lifestyle, a uh, longer lifespan mm -hmm. than currently available. If we teach our children early enough in life what to do, what not to do, then we won't have our chronic illnesses, we won't have the dramatic high cost that we currently have in our health care system, and we'll have a better and healthier population. And I think one of the things, uh, and I know uh, I've been out with you uh, where we've done the Kid Start right. program before, and this lack of physical activity oh, yes. that the kids, yeah. you know, I remember gym was mandatory when I was in school, and, and they're trying to cut cut down on that. Right. Or, you know, we've got to have those kids not just sit in front of the television. Mm -hmm. They've got to be more, go jump rope. Go play hopscotch. Well, we have the you computer, know? we have the games yeah, and all this exactly, stuff. Next week we'll be addressing uh, a group, an organization, uh, that addresses the entire county of Mercer in mm -hmm. this uh, state. Uh, and they run these major Abbott schools, so that'll be good for a Kid Start program. And the week after that, we're having some people up from Florida, Annie Ungrady, to come up. She's going to learn the Simone Prevention Kid Start program to take back down to Jacksonville. Down, and back to, down to Florida. Yeah, so she'll, oh, be a, right. she'll be another spearheader in this area. So that that's very nice. And you heard it here, folks in Mercer. Hey, we're going national with this thing. That's right. And, and the Kid Start program is simple. Uh -huh. You know, we teach the children about food. Remember, 60% of all women's cancers and 40% of all men's cancers are nutritionally related. So we teach them not to eat four-legged animals, mm -hmm. not to eat shellfish, mm -hmm. not to eat dairy products. They're the major three things. If you want dairy, it should be skim or non-fat. We teach them to take vitamins and minerals. We'll tell them uh, about smoking mm -hmm. uh, and no alcohol mm -hmm. and no drugs and work hard. Mm -hmm. uh, obey some authority, you know, obey teachers, work hard in school. Mm -hmm. We'll also bring in a special instrument to the school, to everywhere we go with our Kid Start program, uh, that will cook down a hamburger. Oh, yeah. And we cook it down, and as it cooks down, the smells come out from the hamburger, and all the fat gets accumulated in a test tube. We take the test tube out of the apparatus, send it around to all the kids, and say, look how much fat you have eating in every hamburger you're doing. And they look at it, and they smell, and they say, ooh, ah, we don't want to eat that hamburger anymore. So we show kids in graphic terms mm -hmm. what a hamburger will do to them, how much fat comes in from a single hamburger, in hopes that it will dissuade them from eating a hamburger and everything else. So we invest a lot of time, mm -hmm. and it pays off because our little children, if influenced early in life, can actually do a good thing by having a healthier lifestyle. Now, with our Kids Start program, 
comes our adults. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't do a kids start program without the adult there. Exactly. And that influences the adult who has to buy the food for the children, has to bring in the liquids for the children. So everybody learns, everybody wins. And that's very interesting because I know uh, with the Mercer County Cancer Coalition, one of the initiatives we're looking at is having an urban garden. Right. Because we f we were just appalled at how many kids didn't really know where things really came from, mm -hmm. and it doesn't come off the shelf in ShopRite. No. No, n no uh, you know, not yeah. to get on ShopRite, but it doesn't just come in that little container. That's right. It comes, you know, a berry grows on a bush, mm -hmm. or an apple, of course, grows on a tree. Sure. And to let them see from the time it's planted till the t time it comes up, yeah. and then to have them say, hey, I grew this, and, and we can mm -hmm. eat it. Okay, uh, Dr. Simone, we're going to take a break right here. Good. And